Hi, and welcome to today's episode of Live Healthy Now. Today, I'm joined by the lovely Becky McDermott, who is a passionate netball player and a very keen CrossFitter. And Becky and I had met and chatted at a local networking event. And then Becky suggested this topic for today's conversation, which I absolutely loved because it's something very close to my heart. Becky is going to talk to us today about the power of sport, especially for women, and what she's found through partaking in very varied and different sports and working with lots of different women in leadership, how much sport can build resilience and confidence, all of which impacts your well-being. And I know from my Nike days, this was a huge part of, of what Nike were about and were focusing on. So I'm really excited to dive into this conversation with Becky. So welcome to the podcast. So just to get started, I'd love to find out a little bit about you by asking about your most impactful healthy habit. Um, I'm so excited to talk to you about this, Nicola. Um, it's one of my favourite things to talk about just because the power of sport for women is just exponential. Um, so it's a bit of a strange one. Uh, it took me a long time, long time to implement, probably 28 years to implement. But um, my healthiest habit is um, being able to get into a routine where I exercise first thing on the morning. So um, if you told me this a year ago that I'd be waking up um, and doing the 6am CrossFit class, I'd have laughed you out of the room. Um, it's very much been my boyfriend's influence because he's a He's a, a morning person and I never have been. Um, and it did take a while to get into the swing of things. It was really tough. And I think that's the case for anything new, anything difficult. It takes at least a month of, of you know, grind to make it, to turn um, something into a new habit. Um, but I stuck at it even in the freezing cold <laughs> mornings that we've got at the moment. And it's helped me so much because uh, it was around about the time I started a new job. Um, so less working from home. So I was able to really implement a, a good, a good kind of regime, uh, better time management, uh, most of all, better energy levels and sleep as well. That's been a big plus, but definitely not easy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I've got lots of admiration for you working out first thing on the morning because I know it's a very early start that you have to go to your CrossFit gym and do the, the class. But one of the things you mentioned there that's been part of helping you build this habit is doing it with your boyfriend. And accountability is proven to be really, really valuable when it comes to any kind of habit. But in exercise, it can be something that's really helpful because you've got a buddy, you've got someone cheering you along, you've got someone waiting for you to get up on a morning and get ready and, you know, go out and do that together and spend that mm -hmm. time together as well. So that that's brilliant that you've been able to build that together. And a morning routine is something you know, regardless of what it entails, although I do think moving your body is a good piece of that morning routine, it's really proven to have lots of impact on your energy and focus and just sets your day up, doesn't it? Yeah, and I think one thing I'm I'm keen to to, to stress is that, you know, it, it's not easy. I, I don't have any children. Um, so I've kind of got no one who who relies on me, and I speak to a lot of women who've got full time jobs. Um, I'm an investment manager for a venture capital firm, so I work with female founders and, and entrepreneurs, and they are super women. Um, you included Nicola, you know, children <laughs> running your own business. So it, it's I'm aware of that. It's it, it's not easy to do, and you know, if I have children in the future, I know that that's going to be a, a complete kind of change to my schedule and things like that. And it's probably not going to be easy. So I think we need to take stock that for women in particular, but any parents, um, implementing a healthy exercise regime is super difficult because the reality is you've just got so many things relying on you. Yeah, and and. That, that's a point that I talk about often because your life is going to change and you're going to have different responsibilities and different things happening and, and that dif those different things will mean that you need different things to support your well-being. Mm -hmm. And yes, there are those foundational 
things I talk about with having a strong mindset and, you know, healthy nutrition, moving your body, managing stress, having good quality sleep. But what that looks like for one person at the next will vary because, as you say, mm-hmm. we're all at different stages of our life. And if you were to come and start a family and have a baby, your sleep is definitely going to be impacted <laughs> at that stage. But then there's other things you can do to try to compensate and help to have more rest. So, yeah, you're absolutely right in that. Not everyone can get up really early and, and work out. But for you, you've found that something which is really adding value to your well-being right now. So I, I love hearing about that. And let, let's kind of dig into that CrossFit bit as, as well right now, because you've played lots of different sports and enjoyed many different types of sports as well, from <laughs> team sports to things on your own. And what's CrossFit about for someone who doesn't know anything about that kind of exercise? Um, Well, you're right there, Nicola. It's been very much kind of trial and error, trying different things. I mean, just going back to my school days, I was the the kind of tomboy girl in in a sports college, um, and I tried everything. And I think over the years, you kind of find out what you like and what you don't like. But the big thing is trying it, just putting yourself out there and trying it. So, CrossFit is a really strong example for me. Over, well. The background is um, netball is a very high intensity sport and um, I was finding that the the higher level I was playing, the the less, the more strength I needed and, and strength and conditioning was not something that I was aware about, that I got taught at school, even though I did go to a sports college um, and I would kind of look at these amazing strong women and think, you're so much stronger than me, you're so much faster than me, how do I do that? Um, and, and I had no idea, to be honest. I think this is a big, this is lacking for, for young girls, that kind of knowledge of, you know, how do I make myself stronger for longevity? Um, and I came across CrossFit mainly because um, I tried several different conventional gyms. Um, I did get a personal trainer to kind of introduce me to the basic lifts, so squats, deadlifts, um, and that really helped because for me a conventional gym was the scariest thing in the world um and often I just wouldn't turn up so (laughs) wasted a lot of money on uh, gym memberships so personal trainer got me confident and then I was looking at people doing CrossFit thinking not for me not for me these are crazy people uh they do cardio they do high intensity they do gymnastics I thought no chance but um I thought okay, I'm going to try it out. A lot of CrossFit gyms have free trials. Um, just moved house, so it was around the corner. And I won't lie, it was really scary at first. <laughs> um, I think there's a bit of a there's a bit of a misconception that kind of CrossFit gyms are quite cliquey because they have quite a strong community. Um, so you do kind of have to go into it with an open mind. But um, I wouldn't look back. The biggest thing about my CrossFit journey, and I've been doing it for less than a year, is the women around me um and this is super important we've got such a supportive women's community we're all different shapes sizes ages our ability is so varied and you know every day you turn up there's someone there egging you on um building your confidence to be open there's a lot of a lot of the CrossFit moves that I can't do uh maybe we'll never be able to do especially the gymnastics um because I'm quite tall haven't got the best upper body strength um but you give it a go um but the main thing is is accountability you know signing up to a class knowing that there's going to be someone there you know he'll say Mm -hmm. why didn't you turn up this morning (laughs) um so accountability has been a, a huge struggle for me um so hats off to anyone who can plan their own gym workout turn up get it done I think that's amazing but that's been one of the big pluses of of joining Mm. a kind of a community and and again that's all around that point of finding what works for you I was chatting to somebody just yesterday about some habits she wants to create to be healthier and she was talking about certain types of exercises that she's tried and, and she just really doesn't enjoy them that actually make her feel quite poorly. And we were chatting about exactly this, that you have to find what works for you. And, you know, the, the aim is 
ideally to be doing something that raises your heart level and that you hit those minimum recommended minutes a week, which if it's moderate or high is 75 minutes a week Mm -hmm. and some strength training, which for women especially is absolutely essential. I was a bit surprised when you said that wasn't really incorporated into what you did and learned about at sports college. Mm. Because strength training is so important. But again, strength training doesn't have to be in a gym. It doesn't have to be with weights. You can use resistance bands. You can use other objects. You can use your own body. You can do it at home. You can do it out in the park with friends. You know, there's so many different ways, isn't there? And CrossFit is something that I used to do as well when I worked at Nike. And and I knew a lot about it because I used to actually sell our men's and women's training product in CrossFit became really huge probably about five years ago and you've got the global crossfit games and everything Mm -hmm. and yeah i know what you mean about it can be pretty intimidating because Mm -hmm. it seems big you've got you know if you go to a real crossfit studio you've got these big walls and climbing up the rates and bars and they're doing headstands and they're climbing up the ropes but actually what we used to do was very fun and very team based and working Mm. together or in little you know um two teams competing against each other for different things and I love the dynamics of it you know using balls using ropes using weights using your own body and the bike we would use the assault bike and and treadmill and different things so yeah it's it's great and the community side of CrossFit is a huge part of it isn't it and that's something which you found as one of your values and is important to you when it comes to exercise because of this love of sports and the role that sport plays in your life so kind of tell me a bit about that community aspect as you've gone through school and college and now into corporate life Mm. it's so it's so important I mean I'm very much a team sports kind of person I don't have the discipline for individual sports I'm in awe of anyone who who has got their own individual sport and honestly it it has transformed my life my life wouldn't be what it is now without sport but again I'm conscious that it isn't for everyone so again going back to my school days I was very much that annoying person who was trying to get the other girls to just do one event at sports day so that I didn't have to do them all um and you'd be surprised at the the lack of girls that played sport in a sports college of all places um we tried we had some fantastic athletes but you know it it does all come down to the support available and and that kind of thing but throughout the years I've, I've taken part in different teams and and yes playing the sport is fun and you do get that buzz and it's good for your mental health and well-being and things like that it's an investment but it is very much the people and you know the friends I've made um from my sports teams you know are, are friends for life um I would say uh, I got asked to play I started playing netball socially in Newcastle and, and there's a fantastic netball community in, in Newcastle of all abilities um if you've not played for years and years and years if you want to play at a slightly high level if you want to go the full way there is everything um and, and after university I kind of dipped my toe back into into netball because so I'd never really taken it that far um I actually um spread myself quite thinly but didn't really focus on one sport um which meant that I I mostly played socially and, and still do but um joining this kind of netball community where there were so many teams just by chance you know uh one of my friends now but at the time she was a complete stranger said oh do you want to want to join our team we need a tall person I said go on then um and to be honest that conversation changed my life I've got a, a group of best friends um who add add so much to my life we go on holiday we go on skiing holidays together which is amazing and the key message from this is kind of if you really want to do something, just throw yourself into it. And again, it's easy for me to say because, you know, I, I, again, I don't have children and things like that. But I play with women who've got young children, who've got who run their own business and that kind of thing. And, and you know, that that one or two hours of netball per week is just their time. It's their time to, to just switch off, have a good time, have some girl time. Um, And the rewards, the dividends that could be paid are, you know, endless. Um, So that's kind of 
one example of, of how sport can really kind of transform your life in terms of you could find friends that could be your friends for life. Uh, so it's, mm. it's been brilliant. Mm. Oh, yeah. And I definitely noticed that from people I used to work with because I didn't have a sports background at all. I was that kid at school who dreaded PE and would be the last person to always be picked for any team because I couldn't catch the ball in rounders. I couldn't hit the <laughs> ball in cricket, you know. So I, I really went into this world at Nike quite alien to it. And so many of the people who work there had grown up being part of sports and playing and being part of team sports, you know, in, in, in many of the cases. And I was always kind of in a lot of admiration of many of those people who'd gone through the whole of their education life and then in a work life and still had sport a part of who they were. And I could see some of the skills and abilities that had given them to use in the workplace and I'd often be quite envious of that because I felt as though I don't know I'd missed out and I think you know one of the things I know you and I really wanted to highlight and and you've touched on it there with the netball team locally is this isn't about you having a natural ability to be a sports person from a young age and continuing that on and and actually I would like to come back to that for one of the reasons we wanted to chat about with kids but this mm-hmm. is just about you taking that value of what sport can offer, whether it's, you know, a game of tennis in the park through the summer now and again with your kids or with friends as a way to socialise, or it's part of a netball or football team, or it's going swimming on your own. You know, there's so many different ways to, to play sport and to get involved. But as you say, the ripple effects from taking part a huge and when it is a team sport that can give you so many skills that are very transferable into not just work life but personal family life for sure as well and I just wanted to quickly kind of touch on that phrase sport I know when Mm -hmm. I worked at Nike we would always talk about sport but then always kind of validate what we meant with the fact that sport isn't just those typical things you think about like football or tennis or rugby or hockey sport is literally moving your body and when you look at any of the reports that come out from places like sport england here in in england and they look at adults and kids now um, and sport is defined as anything that you do to move your body so that includes walking dancing it could be skateboarding gymnastics anything you know just dancing around in your kitchen could be a sport so so that term is an umbrella term for basically moving your body and being active in some way which for Mm -hmm. kids includes play which is a massive piece of something that that's very important for health from a mental and physical point of view Mm -hmm. so when you talk to me about sport you you know were very passionate about those benefits it can offer from a confidence and resilience point of view and what you've seen with the women you now work with and support through their own businesses so you know what have you found from that what do you see as generally those kind of common threads from people who have been active yeah and and just to reiterate what you said Nicholas but or you know exercise is anything it, it and and that is so important and I guess in in the most simple sense it could be making that decision to sit and watch tv for 20 minutes versus putting loads of layers on and and just walking around the block for 20 minutes you know that that is sport so you're right um it is so accessible um but in terms of of the benefits again I'm so passionate about this because I'll kind of mention how it's impacted my life and then maybe talk about what the research says because it, it's not just me kind of saying this this is this is something that you know is is really well um covered um so kind of again going back to when I think about what makes me who I am um if I go back to the beginning you know at school um yes I did loads of exercise and I was a bit mad but I really lacked confidence and I, to be honest I always have um and it's it's a it's a struggle I don't think it's something that's just gonna go away um, and sports really helped with that because um, it's kind of my time to to push myself. Um, and, you know, you do get knockbacks. 
in sport and outside of sport, you know, careers, relationships, things like that. And one of the big things that I've learned from exercise and sport is is resilience. So that ability to pick yourself up, dust yourself off and go again. Um, so at the moment, uh, my netball team um, is, is on a very long losing streak and <laughs> I'm very competitive. And sometimes I just think, oh, what's, what's this all for? You know, what's the point? We're not losing. We might get relegated. But if I kind of spend a bit of time digging into that, I can learn a lot from that in how I frame it in my head. You know, it's not the be all and end all if you don't win loads of games. Um, You know, you can show grit, you can show determination. When the going gets tough, that's when you dig in. Um, And that translates into life. You know, life isn't easy. There's lots of pushes and pulls on you as an individual especially if you've got a high pressure job as well. And that translates through. But other things like teamwork, um, learning from other people, that translates across. Self-belief is is a huge thing in, in sports and exercise. Again, if you can kind of demonstrate that you've done something difficult, you know, you made that decision to to wake up in the dark and, you know, get on the spin bike or get on the treadmill or go for a walk it's like it's a big tick for yourself you can finish and think you know what I've done that for me I believe in myself I'm invested in myself and you can kind of take that into your day it's a brilliant way to to start your day um and kind of moving into the world of of business I think um there's been a lot of research on the power of sport for women in leadership positions and and women who are running their own business um so I was looking at a few studies that really caught my eye. And this was mainly, it was US research, I think. Um, but one of the stats I read was that 94% of C-suite females, so that's people who are executive level managers in a company, had played sport, you know, to to a, to a level. Um, and I can think of loads of examples of this. And, and I just want to caveat that you don't have to play sport or do exercise to be successful. You can learn these skills from different areas of your life, through hobbies, through your life experience. You know, I, I'm not banging the drum saying we all have to do this, but it, it helps. Um, and it is, it, it's that ability to translate the the skills that you get from playing sport, especially at, a, you know, a higher level um, into the world of business. Because let's face it, women women's experience in, in business in male dominated industries is is very different to, to men. Um and I think that's where, you know, playing sport, doing exercise can really benefit you in so many ways. Mm. Yeah, that's an amazing stat, isn't it? Ninety four percent of C suite. And it's interesting that that's come from the US because sport is a much more integral part of their education system you know team sports especially American football even soccer I think now but um volleyball basketball for for any genders are really big in schools colleges their Mm. equivalent of our universities and when it gets to that college level it's it's very big you know I went to an American football game in the US when I was away at conference years ago and I didn't realize that it was a college game I think there was like mm. 80,000 people there it was literally like Wembley <laughs> Stadium in just one what? state in a, well, what, one city in one state in America yeah. and I think yeah the, the value that they place on sport is very different not just in the UK but in mm. Europe as a whole and there was a couple of stats that I picked out from the most recent Sport England report, which actually will have been released by the time I, I put this episode out because it's due at, at the beginning of December, just as we're about as we're recording this. But okay. they found that um, only thirty percent of children of all ages, so this is up to age, I think it's seventeen, mm. do thirty minutes of activity a week. Or, or do less than 30 minutes a week, sorry. So 30% of kids are doing less than 30 minutes of activity. And this includes play. And play mm-hmm. is one of the big focuses from companies like Nike, who are working in conjunction with, you know, the government and different charitable organisations and 
yeah. different sports companies like Sport England to try to look at how we can go back to that grassroots to get kids to be more active and to enjoy sports because what we see here in our country is particularly for girls when they reach yeah. those tween ages of kind of 10 to 12 and move from primary school to secondary or high school depending where you live yeah. and what you call it um that sport just drops off you know there's yeah. just very very little there to not just be involved in sport as an extracurricular activity but within school itself and mm-hmm. I think for many parents that's not something you're really aware of and think because you just accept this is the way our education system is and you know mm-hmm. many boys play football obviously not every every mm-hmm. boy is going to be into football but it's much more accessible isn't it and and, and yeah. part of of that journey for boys through their full education you know you have big Saturday league teams and obviously girls football's really picked up over the last four years or so since the England Lionesses started to go more mainstream in terms of visibility and their success and so on but yeah there's just there's this huge gender gap as well of of participation between boys and girls in their activity activity levels and we know that girls do drop out and as Mm -hmm. you're saying there's so many benefits to be had when you're an adult that can benefit you personally and professionally so how do we get kids to know the value of sport and and this is why I wanted Becky to come and chat about it because even if you're sitting there thinking oh god I'm not doing any sport you know remember that term sport means any kind of movement so even getting out walking your dog is still Mm. really a sport but thinking about it for your kids or your grandkids how can you get them to see the value of sport and to know that it's just a great thing to have as part of who you are yeah you've picked up so many important things there Nicola um And I think we are heading in the right direction in terms of culturally, because um, women's teams in the UK have um, experienced such huge success. And Mm. that goes down to the the idea of, you know, if you can't see it, you can't be it. Um, Because growing up, um, it was very much if you played sport, you were manly or you were a tomboy and you would get called names um because my my first love was football I used to play for a a football team but to be honest the reason why I left was because I didn't like the jokes and I didn't like the 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 comments from the boys and looking back I think I really wish I hadn't done that and stuck it out and and again that that's a lesson for me it's not a failure it's a lesson but that was the reality and I I do believe things have gotten a lot better since I was at school but it still exists so we do have more and more role models you know the lionesses you mentioned the women's uh, super league in football is getting so much more viewership than it ever had which is going to bring in sponsors more money which is going to make eventually um, hopefully women's football as a, as a career choice that's you know as good as the professional male footballers um, the England Roses netball team won silver the World Cup which was amazing the England women's rugby team is doing amazing uh, women's cricket you know everything is on the up so we are seeing those kind of role models come through but it does come down to to more than that there's so many factors at play and I'll be really interested to read the report that you mentioned but if we go to school level and again I I went to a sports college but it was really difficult for me to 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 continue playing at kind of taking my sport to a high level coupled with the kind of the cultures that I've mentioned you know it's really difficult being being a young girl and, and, and a teenager for lots of reasons um things like body image Mm -hmm. um I wish that I saw more role models who were strong girls and you know who who lifted weights because when I grew up it was very much you know the skinnier the better sadly and and I think this has gotten better but there is a little bit of conditioning of you know you have to shrink yourself to look good um I do think things are much better and I'm so glad but let's face it, it still exists. So 
not only is it kind of um well I guess it, it it there's just so many things which are really making it difficult for for girls for young girls to kind of take that step but we are heading in the right direction but you're right we've got to make it easier and more attractive for young girls to continue those healthy habits so even if you know a young girl hates PE and they can't wait to drop it as a subject you know that's absolutely fine but I would hope that you know there's there's kind of conversations had and and cultural changes whereby you know it is important to move your body and it is important to build your strength because for example in much later life and you know when you hit the menopause and things like that you know those kind of things affect your muscle strength so these habits are so important to kind of carry through when you have children that affects your body in so many different ways so it's about how do we give girls the same kind of set of starting points that that boys do um and I and I don't know the answer and it's something that I think is so important because you're right that that dropout rate is is Mm. so much higher and it it shouldn't be kind of okay you've got to do a team sport which is perceived to be a bit bit more manly or you've got to do a girly sport it can be anything it can be any kind of exercise um so yeah this is something that is super important I think it's getting better I hope it's getting better um so much more to do yeah there is and so much of what you said there I I, I totally align with and as I mentioned you know when I worked at Nike this was a huge part of what I did I was in the kids team for many years and you know we brainstorm how we can support girls to stay active to be you know involved in sports and a lot I think that there's very different elements to it there's a big piece with the educational system and the support that the government provides and then local authorities so that you know there's all of that and then clubs and them being funded and you know running independently outside of school and so on but a huge piece that you touched on which is something I often speak about is the role model element Mm -hmm. Girls need role models. We all need role models growing up. And it's been very normal for boys to have those role models in Mm -hmm. many different sports. Football's always the big one that comes to mind. But even Formula One or cricket, you know, there's lots of very high profile athletes in athletics as well. You know, that's an obvious one. Who can Mm -hmm. sit here and name a female athlete? But you can probably name three off the top of your head. Very powerful male athletic Mm -hmm. athletes you know runners or or high jumpers or long jumpers that kind of of athlete and we need that for girls but the big call out is one element of the role model piece is those athletes and professionals but the other is real life people like you and I Mm -hmm. is people who are in these kids lives who are just very normal taking care of themselves and this is is my vision and mission of why I do what I do because I want to normalize healthy habits so our kids grow up knowing the value of taking care of themselves and knowing that when you feel good and healthy you have that self-belief and that Mm. leads to happiness that's ultimately what it's about Mm -hmm. and so whatever we can do if you are listening to this thinking oh I don't do much to show anyone you know whether it's your own kids or other children in in your community and and kind of social circle what can you do and Mm. I know a lot of women who've gone to play netball in their 30s in their 40s even in their Mm. 50s where I used to to live in Gosford there was a local netball club and it was an absolute mix of age ranges and abilities Mm -hmm. as you said you know because a lot of women start to think well you know for many of us we don't always have big friendship groups when we age you know our friends have Mm -hmm. changed through life circumstances and so on so the community side's a big draw as well as a a way to get fit back to that point of doing something you enjoy that you can create Mm -hmm. a habit on so women you know start to do it and then your kids are going to see that and think oh that's good you know my mum's taking on a new hobby and she's playing netball or she's going to play badminton or you know whatever it might be so the the role model piece is mm. massive the, there's generally 
a gap full stop, not just in sport, but for women. You know, I've done this market research before, actually, where I've asked mm-hmm. women to share who their role model is and, and you can't give one. You know, people might say, oh, I don't know, maybe like Beyonce or I know in sport it was always um, Paula Radcliffe or Serena Williams. But but they're much older now and, and Paula, you know, isn't participating professionally any longer. And, and for a lot of young mm-hmm. girls, they're not going to know or resonate with someone like that anymore. So it's great. We have got girls in the Lionesses and other teams starting yeah. to become um you know seen a lot more and not just when they're playing but on tv in different ways and podcasts and and you know the tv programs that kids would access so lots lots to do as as you're saying it's something we could talk about so much more you know there's so many things that you can touch on here And, and a big call out that I want to make is this risk from kids not being active enough yeah there is a reality here in that not just kids but most of us adults included are very inactive and that's Mm. leading to this huge rise that we're seeing in chronic illnesses many of which ultimately are stress related and that's Mm. because we aren't helping ourselves to be healthy through moving our bodies and being active as well as other lifestyle choices and so we've Mm. got to help our kids to grow up and not face those same risks to their health that unfortunately we are facing with certainly you know the the generation that I'm part of and and what we're seeing Mm -hmm. there you're so right and I mean just to touch upon the role model point you know we don't have to you know think big all the time I I, I couldn't agree any more with what you said Nicola we don't have to you know all get young girls to be saying okay I'm going to be a professional sportswoman it's so admirable if a woman or a man who is you know got children who is thinking I really want to make a change here but there's so many things against me but I'm just going to throw myself out there I'm going to join a gym I'm going to turn up to a back to netball class and to do that it it is is so impactful for as a as a role model for say your children because the lessons that your children can learn from that is okay I I know my mum or dad doesn't want to do this they're doing something they don't feel comfortable with wow that's really impressive because you know it shows confidence it shows self-belief um and a few examples I can think of is you know some of the the mums at my CrossFit gym are just honestly super women they've got full-time jobs they've got children to look after and you know every so often you'll see a little a little young person um, sat very very nicely waiting for the mum to finish a you know a quick 30 minute 40 minute workout and just that child sitting there having mm. you know vision of their mum just lifting weights throwing herself out there they're the role models that that we need to have more of so it's not it's not big it's not you know in order to solve this problem we need to fully professionalise female sport and win all the gold medals yes that would be great but it's the everyday kind of um little wins which which do create role models so I think it, it's so important what you've mentioned Nicola yeah 100% and that's why I focus on helping women to build healthy habits and to know the value of taking care of themselves because I absolutely 100% know that women have the power to change the world you know, everything that we're trying to achieve with equality, equity, diversity, inclusion, women are behind that. You know, we we can be that driving force, but we need to have the self-belief in ourselves to begin with. And then we need other women to believe in themselves and become strong and our kids to grow up, just knowing that they can be anything they want to be. They can have any impact that they want to have. And, you know, we'll do that by taking that lead and and you mentioned, you know, the word strong a couple of times, and that's something that was a big shift in my own health journey when it came to exercise, because I exercised to fix the things that I thought were wrong with me, like my weight mm-hmm. and the way I looked and how I felt. And when I flicked that switch, which took a long time and, and it kind of almost happened by accident because I was still approaching the type of exercise I did with a goal of losing weight and hitting a number on the scales because yes I grew up believing that um a normal woman was a skinny woman you know and, and that that's 
that's what so many of us women have been conditioned to think, you know, size equals your worth and your value. And when I was able to make that change and focus on being strong, not just physically, but I realized the impact mentally being strong has and and, and the strong for me doesn't just come from exercise and it comes through all of the other healthy habits but in exercise it isn't only from the physical changes to muscles that can make or in your heart being one of those muscles but from the mental side so when I go out running for example I always say that you know running isn't something that I find easy I never mm. have done and it's not something I can say that I absolutely love and and have as a big part of how I work out and move but I love the running because mentally that resilience piece comes in you talked about in that I know it's hard I know it's gonna hurt I know that I'm gonna struggle and I know I'm gonna struggle mentally and so pushing through with that self-belief of come on you can do this you know how you're going to feel at the end imagine that feeling when you've finished when you know you've hit the 5k or 30 minutes or whatever it might be you know that is what I, I gain from it and that's the strength and when it comes to that physical um uh, appearance side of things the aesthetics shall we say strong is what we need to help mm -hmm. women and girls to prioritize for all of the right reasons because yeah I'm with you in that sport was masculine building muscle was masculine you know there was lots of derogatory names used to women who did have muscles and so yeah. on and I do do believe that's shifting but it's a slow change, isn't it? It's it's something that we do have to work on. Um, and yeah, yeah I think the, the more that we just normalise being strong in every way, physically and mentally, the more that's going to help shift away those challenges we have as females with our body and, you know, our appearance and so on. Absolutely. Uh, you know, the best thing I ever did was stop stop going on the scales um, and I'm probably, well, I am the heaviest I've ever been in my whole life, but I'm probably the happiest in kind of my body. And it, it's still a struggle. You know, I am I'm bigger than a lot of my friends um, because I'm tall, but now I'm starting to build a little bit of muscle. I, I am bigger, but then I go to my netball team or my gym and I see other women like me. And it's kind of just that, oh, OK, you know, this is great. You know, I want to be like her. I'm going to keep going. They're an inspiration. They don't care about, you know, the numbers on the scale. So it's having people around you and surrounding yourself with people who can help you change those very hardwired um, beliefs that that young girls kind of grow up with. But, you know, it's it's I would say it's a, it's a daily struggle. Um, you know, if going on the scales is is really tough. Um, so I would recommend just forgetting about that but obviously if, if for health reasons you kind of need to to lose weight that is important um for accountability um and my kind of dream would be that all young girls have access to kind of strength and conditioning at, at school because that is going to set you up just for life and I know like you mentioned Nicola when when I kind of first got into to training it was okay how many calories can I burn and the more calories the better and then I found that it was cardio, cardio, cardio. I wasn't fueling myself properly because I was not eating enough to stimulate that um, recovery from cardio. So it was actually having the opposite effect to what I wanted. I wasn't building any muscle to become toned and lose fat. So kind of reversing that and, and really doing the research because, again, we're just not taught it Um and, and and my boyfriend's been a brilliant example. You know, he'll he'll tell me about all the things he's learned and he's super into looking things up. And it's addressing those those gaps in our knowledge of, okay, well, if you want to improve your health and uh, your longevity, which is a huge thing, you want to be able to build muscle, not be super, yeah. super muscly, and you know, that's not for everyone, but that ultimately is gonna replace fat that you've got on your body which is better for the long term but the reality is muscle is heavier than than fat so the scales might end up going in a different direction kind of once once you've lost weight but 
it's okay um, because it is a it's better for the long term. So you're right. It's about addressing those those things that maybe we we think we know, and speaking to people about it. And I think your running example is is super important. It's not about how fast you did a five k. It's not about how far you went. It's the fact that you got out of bed and you did it. Um, and I think it's even more impressive if you start to do a run and you're in the worst mood ever and you're like, I just want to go home. And it might have felt like the worst run you've ever done. I think it's way more impressive to get to the end of that than, you know, to run 10k for fun. <laughs> I mean, those people are great. <laughs> because the resilience that you get from that and the self-belief of, I didn't want to do this. I would have done anything not to do this, but I did it. Yeah. Even if it was 20 minutes, who, who cares? It's 20 minutes more than you would have done. It, it, the benefits just are fantastic. So I, I really like the example that you used about running. Mm. Yeah. Oh, great. And and I'll just use a quote that I've heard on other podcasts from different doctors and scientists in the health field. That muscle is the currency of longevity. We need muscle for so many different things. And and again, back to what we were talking about with that perception of muscle being very masculine has Mm. shifted because as women, it's very, very, very hard to build defined muscles in the way Mm. that you probably think when you hear the word muscle. You know, I I remember being one of these women years ago and and I still hear women today saying, oh, yeah, but am I going to just bulk up? And you can't yeah. just bulk up really, really, really like muscle is very hard and it, it's a long process, you know, and, and and as soon as you aren't using those or continuing to build those muscles, they start to change. And, you know, that's why bodybuilders are up and down in the way their muscles yeah. are all of the time. So, yeah, the, the strength side of, of muscle, you know, muscle might not be visible as such, but you will feel it and mm-hmm. it's going to give you all of those things we need as we age to keep moving bending stretching picking things up you know getting in and out of the car things we take for granted now Mm -hmm. that's what Mm -hmm. muscles do as well as lots of other you know functions within our body in terms of how our cells renew and and obviously that's a huge part of the aging process and something we want to protect so that we can have our health for the longest health span possible so I know we could chat forever about all of this because there's so much and I hope we've given you listening just lots to think about and we've touched on lots of different subjects from team sport itself to growing up playing sport of any kind to know what sport is right now and maybe what it can bring if you picked up something new that could be part of how you improve your fitness and health and the other benefits that can offer and being that role model that everyday role model that actually probably has a much bigger impact than someone a child sees there on the TV kicking a ball. So it's been brilliant to chat, Becky. I've really enjoyed it. I'm going to pop also into the notes the link to Sport England's website. So if anyone's interested in finding out more, it's really interesting what you can read on there. You don't have to go into the report, but just to read about some of the research that they've done with kids and adults and some of their findings and their values they've got about trying to help make everyone more active and why that's so important um and yeah becky if you want to share where people can connect with you as well if they've enjoyed listening to you and want to find out a bit more about what you do yeah absolutely and thank you for having me on your podcast nicola i I've loved talking about this subject with you. And like you said, we could spend all day doing this. But yeah, just to kind of summarise the, the the things that you um you summarise so perfectly. You know, it's not about the big, huge changes. It's about the everyday small choices. And it's never too late to do anything. And, you know, it, it's that small investment for for the long term. So I've really enjoyed speaking to you about it today. Thank you, Nicola. You're welcome. Yeah, it's been great. And that's a great place to end with. It's all about the small steps, which lead to very big changes. So yeah, brilliant. Thanks, Becky. Thank you.